Hi everyone, I'm Tuhina Joshi. I'm a policy associate with Ikigai Law and today we're going to be discussing data protection and the new um, draft data protection bill that is proposed to become the data protection law for the country. Um, I will be taking over from my colleague Neha Chaudhary who had just discussed the basics of data protection with you and uh, I'm sure you've come to understand that data is something that we're dealing with on a day-to-day -day basis. It's a part of our everyday lives unless you live in the hills and you're disconnected from the internet. Data is going to be an intrinsic and very important part of your life and you need to understand how it's being used by different companies and if you're a lawyer of course I'm sure you would be interested in understanding what are the legal complications involved with the use of such data and that's sort of what we're going to be discussing today. Uh, we're going to be looking at notice and consent under the data protection bill and um, I understand that data protection privacy might seem a little complicated at the outset, but it's actually very simple. We're going to boil it down to the basic principles uh, on the basis of which these legal obligations under the bill have actually come up. These are problems that are faced by you and I every day as consumers of applications, you know, that, uh, that collect data on a day-to-day -day basis. So no worries, we're going to take it slow. We'll break it down to the basics and I hope you're in for a fun ride. So um, notice. All right, uh, I don't know about you, but um, I am an application junkie. Every day that uh, I open my Play Store, I find a new application that I can use on my phone that brings to me some amount of personal convenience, makes my life easy, makes shopping easy, you know, and um, I'm downloading new things every day. Uh, and I'm, as I'm sure you've experienced, when you download these applications, there's a ton of boring loopholes that you need to sort of jump through before you finally get to that starting page and you can actually start your experience with that application. And uh, these boring loopholes include things like accepting terms of use, reading privacy policies, saying I agree, I accept, I agree, I accept, until of course you can finally come down to the user experience. So how many of us actually end up reading these terms of use? How many of us actually understand what privacy policies are? And how many of us um, realize the importance of these notices? Now, in legal terms, what that boring, long document is basically trying to do to you, for you is to explain what's happening with your use of that application. Who is collecting your data? So for example, if tomorrow you were to download Amazon, it's a great shopping app by the way, um, nobody's endorsing it here, but you know, if you were to download Amazon tomorrow, they would be collecting a lot of information about you. You might think that, you know, you just open the application, you find the next best laptop for yourself on, since you're on a student loan, I'm sure, you know, buying a cheap laptop is important. Amazon's a great way to do it. Again, not endorsing them. But um, yeah, you would find this cheap laptop, you would buy it and you would give your delivery address, you would give your name. They'd probably know um, the age category to which you belong on the basis of your shopping experience on that application. And that's a lot of information. Amazon could use that information in order to create a customer profile for you and give you targeted ads. Yes, those bothersome, bothersome ads that you see whenever you use any application today. So, and, and it's your right as a user to know how that data is being used. So that's the, uh, that's the purpose that a terms of use or a privacy policy tries to achieve for you. What a privacy policy also tries to do is to let you know how your data is being safeguarded, how it's being protected. Because you might not think that your shopping experience on Amazon or any other data that is being collected through a mundane, so-called mundane app is very important and that it being shared with a third party wouldn't matter. But it's, it's, it's uh, the, the, the kinds of profiles and the kinds of user behavior and that can be collected on the basis of the tiny, tiny amounts of data that you build on a day-to-day -day basis is very, very, it's, it can be monetized uh, to a big degree. So yes, it does concern you. Um, now this is a problem that the Sri Krishna committee and uh, this is the committee of experts on data protection that came together to solve this problem of how do we protect users data? How do we guarantee the fundamental right of privacy that was granted to all citizens of the country in the famous Putaswami judgment of the Supreme Court? How do we ensure that this data is protected on a day-to-day -day basis? So number one is of course requiring 
all data principles to uh, give all consumers a notice before that data is collected. And now the way that these notices are going to be collected once this law comes into place is going to be slightly different. It's not going to be your run of the mill, long, unreadable terms of use. It's probably going to be something in an easy readable format that you can understand as you are reading so that you as a user realize what is being done with your data. It could be through a visual means, it could be in your local language. Basically, what the committee, the Shri Krishna committee had tried to do in formulating this provision, that section 8 of the Personal Data Protection Bill, is to make it as easy as possible for the everyday user to understand what's being done with their data and to also know what they can do in case that data, in case there's a data breach, which means that their data is misused. So, Coming down to the provision, and this could be slightly boring, but again, like I said, these are easy, simple to understand concepts. These are basic requirements that you, I'm sure, if I were to pose the question of how you would like a notice to look so that it makes it easy for you to understand, I'm sure you would be able to think of these things as well. So let's come down to it. The first is the purpose for which your personal data is going to be processed. Now let's take the Amazon example. You would want to know what kinds of purposes that marketing data of yours, that consumer behavior profile of yours is going to be used for. If it's going to be used to target different kinds of, to target you with ads on your Gmail, on your Facebook, across your internet presence, that's probably something that you might want uh, to take a call against. You should have the choice to decide for or against making that, uh, making that purchase or uh, downloading that application. So that's number one. Number two is the categories of personal data that are going to be collected. Why is this important? You're sharing a ton of data on Amazon. You're letting them know about your consumer behavior, but you're also sharing your financial information. And while I'm sure it probably doesn't matter to you whether your consumer data is shared with someone else, your bank account surely is something that you want to keep with yourself. So the categories of personal data, the kinds of personal data that are going to be collected is something that would be important for any user and which is why it's also required in the notice. The second is the identity of the data fiduciary. So the data fiduciary is the person who is collecting the data and who is responsible for deciding what happens with that data. It's called processing under the personal data protection bill. Processing is basically another word for saying collection, usage, um, analyzing, etc, etc. So data fiduciary in this case would be Amazon. So you would need to know the identity of the data fiduciary and if there is a data protection officer available in the country who you can go to in case you have a consumer grievance. The fifth would be the basis for such processing. Now what do you mean by basis? Under the scheme of this law, and this is a scheme that has been borrowed from the European GDPR, that's the General Data Protection Regulation that's used in the European Union, there are certain kinds of legal basis on the basis of which your data can be processed or collected or used. So under the scheme of this current, uh, under the scheme of the Personal Data Protection Bill, there's consent.